welcome to our YouTube channel. Let's travel with D and Night. Today is our third day in Cairns. Today we are taking a road trip to Atherton Tablelands. This is a paradise with many beautiful attractions. This will be our route for today and we are planning to visit a few selected places out of many. Atherton Tablelands is a highland region near Cairns. Landscape there is a mix of rainforest, wetlands and savanna. This is one of the few places in the country where you might spot the rare lump hole street kangaroos. Our first stop was Lake Barry, which is located in the Crater Lakes National Park. There are a few beautiful walking tracks around this area. This is a beautiful freshwater lake located in the eastern parts of Atherton Tablelands. There is a nice cruise available from the tea house if you have time. Make sure to check the timetable before you come here. Then we stopped at Yangabara, which is a beautiful little town to see platypus. We learn from the visitor center that we can see platypus very closely at the Preston Creek. We went to the Preston Creek near Alamba Pockets and waited to see if we can catch a glimpse of a platypus. Even though we didn't see a platypus, we got to see this beautiful suspension bridge. As you can see, this is an old bridge with wooden planks. You can only have 10 people on the bridge at a time. Curtain Fig Tree was our next stop. I'm sure you will be surprised to see this giant fig tree. Because the extensive aerial roots that drop about 15 meters to the forest floor and have formed a living curtain. It's interesting to know how this is formed. The fig tree would have started with a seed dropped on a host tree in the canopy. This strangler fig grew vertical roots which gradually became thicker and interwoven. Those fig roots then formed a curtain-like appearance. Over centuries, the host trees rotted away, leaving the freestanding fig tree. The tree is nearly 50 meters tall and is estimated to be over 500 years old. Stopped at Malanda Falls. This is a fantastic stop in the lush rainforest. Can you see the flood marks on the little hut? So imagine how much flooding must have been there. Malanda Falls tumbled over basalt rock that was formed by an ancient lava flow. In front of the falls, there is a man-made swimming pool. This area is safe for swimming, except after very heavy rain. So make sure to bring your swimsuits if you want to get down there. We then took a walk to Malanda Falls Conservation Park with the aim of spotting platypus and tree kangaroos. This is an inspiring walk through a beautiful rainforest. We didn't have a lot 
with platypus this time also. But instead, we saw some tortoises swimming in the water. Also, we were very lucky to spot a tree kangaroo on our walk. Can you see him there? These tree kangaroos are a very rare species and only found in the northern parts of Australia. They are marsupials and so they carry the young ones in a pouch like kangaroos. As you can see, we managed to get very close to this fully grown male tree kangaroo. We were so lucky because the kangaroo didn't panic and vanished. And of course, he didn't attack us. We had to be very slow in approaching him, as he was always looking at us. Malanda Falls Visitor Information Centre is also there if you need any local information. Also, you can learn a lot about the area. Then we had a quick stop at the Mila Mila Falls lookout. The area was a bit misty when we went there, but itself it made a breathtaking scenery. Now we are on the way to Mila Mila Falls, which is the first one of the waterfall circuit. As you can see, Mila Mila Falls is a magnificent looking waterfall and we were so lucky that there was a lot of water in the falls. If you have enough time, make sure to bring your swimsuit because this is certainly worth having a dip. Mila Mila Falls is one of the most photographed waterfalls in Australia. So make sure that you also leave your digital footprint in this amazing waterfall. Now we are at our second stop in the circuit and it was Zilli Falls. Although this is a nice waterfall, the weaving platform was on the side, so it is hard to capture a nice view of the falls. The third and the last waterfall of the waterfall circuit is the Elinja Falls. Can you hear the sound of water flowing through the lava columns? This is another beautiful falls that you don't want to miss. Let's go and see. Now we have stopped at the North Johnston River Lookout. There is a nice track that you can take to go to the lookout. The lookout is there in about 1.7 kilometers. This time, 
we stopped at Josephine Falls, which is one of the most beautiful falls in the tropical North Queensland area. There are a few spots that you can have a swim, but make sure you always take warnings here seriously. As you can see, the waterfall was full of water because of the recent rain in the area. Also, the flashing red warning lights are on and that means today is not a good day for swimming. No matter how good a swimmer you are, don't risk your life getting into this water. But you always can enjoy the breathtaking views of the waterfall from the waving decks. Now we are at the boulders. The boulders is a large clear freshwater pool and perfect for an afternoon dip. The boulders is surrounded by thick rainforest and is a perfect place to calm yourself down listening to the natural sounds of water. We finished our Atherton Tablelands journey with a dip in the cool water at Babinda Boulders. Hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when a new video is released. Also, please like, comment and share with your friends. Bye for now. See you again in another video.